Hello, I'm Jay from Volunteer Audio. Uh, I wanted to make a video real quick and talk about how to properly set the gains on your amplifier. Uh, this is one of the most uh, often I see incorrectly done steps in installing a system, whether it be in a, a Harley, a boat, a car, or truck. You've got to get the gains of the amplifier set correctly. If you turn that dial too far up, you're going to get a clip signal, most likely blow your speakers, end up with problems that you may blame the equipment for. So hang tight, watch what we do. I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. Uh, let's go through the steps on this, this Harley we've just finished up, and I'll show you how to get every single penny out of that amplifier you bought into your speakers. All right, let's check it out. All right, so let me take a second and tell you what we're going to be using today to set the gains on our amp. Uh, I like using tools that make things easier. Uh, this can be done many different ways, and, and, and I'm not talking about by your ear. I know I've seen people with screwdrivers in their ears, they turn the dial, they think they've got it right. They don't. Uh, you can use an oscilloscope and play test tones and look for square waves in the, uh, in the sine wave of the, of the track. Anytime it squares off on the edges, it's clipping. Uh, we have these awesome tools like this SMD DD1 meter here. This is a distortion detector. It's gonna do the same thing as an oscilloscope with a little red or green light. So it makes it really easy for you to see what you're doing. Um, I know not everybody's gonna have one of these tools, but if you'll go to volunteeraudio.com, you'll see that we actually offer this tool for rental. So we'll send it to you with the correct connectors to plug directly into your speaker harness on your Harley. I'll allow you to set your gains, send it back to us, and you're gonna have a very small fee compared to owning one of these tools. If you wanna buy one, great, just buy it from us. Don't, don't send it back and we'll keep the, uh, the full amount and you'll own a tool so you can correctly set gains over and over in the future. All right, come around here to the amp and I'll show you how we're gonna connect and what we're gonna do. Okay, so first I wanna start by telling you the things we need to make sure we've done before we get to the point of setting our amp gains. So maybe you already have a system installed and you're thinking about doing this. Let's make sure everything else that we need to do is done first because this is the last step. So this is a 2019 CVO. It's, it's Black Cherry. It had the factory boom stage two audio system in it. We redo a lot of these because these speakers really aren't great. Um, it has the GTS radio in it. Now the factory flash has a lot of bass. It's very distorted at high volumes. So we always go in and we reflash it. So I've already took a techno research tool. I've connected to the, to the computer of the bike and we have flashed this uh, radio. Uh, we go into the default settings. I'm doing the six speaker, two amp flash. It would be what some people would call boom stage one, but we use the upper, lower, and lid speaker flash, so six speakers, two amplifiers. We find this is the cleanest flash. Uh, it gives us the best signal so we don't have distorted bass at high volumes. So uh, if, you're, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe now uh, because we're gonna be doing a whole video series on how to flash your radio and what each one of those flashes do, and you're definitely gonna wanna uh, check out and see how that goes. Uh, all right, so once we've got our radio flashed, we have to also play a test tone through our amplifier. So again, there's a series of YouTube videos that we're fixing to launch that are gonna have all of these different frequencies. Uh, so you can go on there and you can stream them through YouTube, through your Bluetooth into your radio. Or also, if you were to happen to rent a distortion detector from us, it's gonna come with a USB drive that already has all of those test tones on it. So uh, we gotta bring our radio up to correct listening volume. We wanna go to the loudest, clean volume for the radio. On a GTS radio, which is what we're using in this one, it's normally almost all the way up. It's actually two gray, uh, I guess you'd call them gray dots on the screen from being full volume. So go all the way up to where there's two dots that aren't highlighted, and that's where we're gonna set our gains on our amplifier. Now this particular install is a pretty big one. I've got upper speakers, lower speakers, lid speakers, and a sub. So we're using this very large Audison uh, it's the same family as Hertz from Electromedia. It's a big Audison five channel amplifier. So I'll be setting the front speakers, the rear speakers, and the subwoofer. Um, each one of these, we're gonna use some different tones for. So I'm gonna use a one kilohertz, negative five decibel tone to set my front speakers. Um, what, what that means is I'm gonna be setting a flat tone uh, so that our meter can read it, and it's negative five decibel off of a standard tone. So it's actually gonna get us five dB louder than if I did it on a zero dB tone. This is what we normally use when we're kind of worried that the customer might blow the speakers, 
but we want to give him as much as we can out of the amplifier. So if I'm doing something with a lot of tweeters, like these upper speakers have a very bright tweeter, tweeters are easier to blow, I'm going to do a negative 5 dB tone when I'm setting my gains. Now when I get to the subwoofer, we're going to play a 40 hertz, 40 hertz, uh, negative 10 decibel tone. So it's going to be 5 decibel more on the sub than we have on the mids and highs. Most people think they need more bass. We want to give it to them. Our sub is less likely to blow than our front speakers. So we're going to make sure and give it a little more power to that here at the amplifier. I a lot of times do the same thing with our rear speakers. I'll set them at a negative 10 dB because it's harder to hear your rear speakers than your front. So it's going to give us a little bit more of an even tone. So with that said, at this point, we've flashed our radio. We've turned the volume of the radio up to our loudest clean point, and I've also disconnected all of the stock speakers. You don't want to be listening to these tones while you're setting it. It can cause damage to your hearing. If you're in a position that you can't unplug the speakers, definitely wear some sort of hearing protection. So our tool, I've made this very nice harness that just plugs into the front speaker outlets. So all I have to do is unplug the feed to the front speakers. I can plug this in and it's gonna be connected right into my DD1. It's gonna give me a very clean signal that I don't have to worry about the quality of the connection, as well as freeing my hands up so I can hold the meter, as well as adjust my amplifier. So let's start setting these gains. We're gonna start with the front. You're gonna do this same thing on the rears and the sub to make sure you get the most out of it. So I'm gonna start with a one kilohertz, negative five dB. Let me get my radio there. Um, that's about a five minute track, so it gives me a lot of time to get that set up. All right, so when you're playing the correct tone, you'll see a blue light saying the one kilohertz note is detected. Now I'm on the front out, so I'm gonna go to the front of my radio, of my amplifier here where it says front. I'm gonna go to my level, some will call it gain. I'm gonna slowly turn that dial up until I see a red light come on for distortion. So you'll see it flash there, but keep going until you get a solid red light and then back it off ever so slightly to see that go away. Now, a couple things I have also checked in this radio, you need to make sure you've checked at this point, is make sure the bass isn't turned way up in the radio. The treble's not turned way up in the radio, and you have good battery voltage on the bike before you set the gains. I always put mine on a trickle charger to make sure that it's ready to go. So as you've seen, if I take my level and I go up just slightly more, red light comes on, so I back it off just a hair, and I've now set my front gains. It's very, very simple. What we're getting is the cleanest output without a clipped signal from this amp. A clipped signal is gonna blow your speakers. A clean signal is gonna give you plenty of volume, long riding without overheating your amp and without losing any of the expensive equipment you've probably bought. So I'm gonna continue that same process. Uh, if you had a non-CVO, there's gonna be a backbone harness right up here and we have another connector that plugs into it very easily to do the rear speakers. In this case, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna to connect to my rear speakers with some probes so I can set those rear gains. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing for the sub, but I just wanna let you see, we're gonna use a one kilohertz, negative five dB for our front speakers, one kilohertz, negative 10 for the rear, and then we use a 40 hertz, negative 10 decibel no tone to do the sub. Again, subscribe to us on YouTube. Look at our other videos because let's say you're the type of person that you listen to YouTube primarily. A lot of people listen to YouTube music now. I hate YouTube music. I like YouTube, but the music is not uh, of the quality that I think it should be. But if you're doing that, you're gonna need to set your gains with the tones off of YouTube. Uh, if you set it with a USB or you set it with another device, and then you try to play it off YouTube, it's not gonna be matched up right. Uh, if you primarily listen to your phone plugged into the USB, just use the USB drive with all the tones on it. We also have tones on CD, but we know we're not using those in a Harley. But I hope this has helped you. I hope it's give you a little bit of information on how to properly set this. We don't just turn these all the way to the right, you turn it all the way to the right, you're gonna introduce distortion and you're not gonna be happy with your system. With this, it's gonna go as loud as it possibly can stay as clear as it can and sound like some of the other videos you've seen us post of the walkaways where we can walk away five minutes down the road, still hear it, not overheat anything and not blow the speakers. But thank you for checking out this video. Uh, subscribe, follow us, call us. If you want one of these tools, you can buy one from us. If you just wanna use one, I'll rent it to you. I just wanna make sure that at the end of it all, you're happy with your system, that you enjoy the audio, 
because this is what we want to do for a living. And as long as you're happy, I'm going to have people in the future that want to do it again. Thank you for watching. God bless. Have a good evening.